Uh, well, welcome everyone to the first episode of CS Podden Breaks. Uh, I'm Ellie. I'm Shalini. And we are both PhDs in the computer science department here. And we have today with us our guest is... Yes, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my name is Erna Sev Artnardottir, or Erna for short. Uh, and we're going to start our interview now. Um, so, first of all, this is the computer science department and we all have our own stories. So, Anna, how did you come into this world? Uh, so, I guess my background is um, rather non-typical for someone who is teaching at this department. Um, so, I started um, having a position in the Department of Engineering and Department of Computer Science here at RU last, um, last autumn. And, uh, but my background is actually biology. So I did my bachelor's in molecular biology, and then I went on to study uh, physiology and sleep in, um, um, and did a master's and PhD in biomedical sciences. So, uh, <clears throat> but the reason um, sleep is something that relates to the department of uh, both engineering and computer science is that we do um, a lot of recordings and we have a lot of data. Um, and we actually have then, it's very interdisciplinary. And we need a lot of people working with us who have then a machine learning background, um, who can make software, um, user-friendly software for our patients and our research subjects, etc. And we are now, for example, we have a huge project called the Sleep Revolution. It's on Horizon 2020 project that we just got funded for um, um, a lot of money <laughs> and uh, 15 million euros and um, and there I think the reason we got funded is because we have experts in all of these different disciplines so I can't say that I know programming or that I can do the machine learning um, algorithms myself but I bring then other things to the table mm -hmm. yes that's that's yeah. that's actually fantastic that's the dream yeah that's the dream yeah. <laughs> and uh, before, yeah like uh, that's uh, most of us are quite enclosed into the CS department, but as someone who is uh, uh, in lots of these, sees lots of different backgrounds together, can you tell us, like, are there, do we as computer scientists, are we behaving differently? Um, <laughs> So actually one of the things that has been a bit uh, tricky for me, because now I'm teaching research methods in the master's, uh, um, the master's course for computer science, is that um, in the department of computer science, you don't write in the same way as we do in many other departments. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I had to learn uh, to do, um, you know, because it's, it's a different structure. So I'm used to this very rigid structure and was the same when I work with psychology students, sports science students, engineering students, you know, uh, physicians, biologists, etc. I worked with people from many, many disciplines. It's always the same, this kind of IMRAD structure, introduction, methods, results, discussion. Mm -hmm. And then you start working with computer scientists and it's a bit different. Yeah. So there are other chapters and different ways to set things up and uh, you can, and the structure can be very flowing. So yeah. that has been actually very interesting and it's been a good experience to realize that there's not just one way of doing things there are actually many ways to do this and uh, but I, it's, it's been, that's been a bit of a learning experience and it's also always interesting when you're working with people with different backgrounds um, to know um, when you communicate so that uh, people understand each other it yeah. can't be uh, we just had a meeting um, at uh, half an hour ago where uh, Jackie for example mentions github and my project manager says what wow. because <laughs> for Jackie this is normal language and I now know what github is um, a year ago I didn't so you know this is something that uh, it's 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 always fun to uh, learn these connections and what works to communicate properly because yeah. that's the key if you want to have a good interdisciplinary team you have to have good communications yeah I absolutely agree. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the same with me and Ellie. I mean, the That's things she do and what things I do, it's completely it's, different. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we once had to, just like for 20 minutes, yeah. had a scientific discussion and even the same words didn't mean the same things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was hearing something else. <laughs> yeah. um, and, um, and I think actually one of the things I've learned with this over time is this uh, imposter syndrome that I think many, many people uh, feel is that they think they should know everything because they reach a certain level so you are doing a PhD or you are already uh, have a, having a position and then you think you should know this and you actually don't ask what it, what is that 
and I've stopped, I've stopped uh, doing this. So now I always just ask, what is this? And um, my, I, t I try telling everyone who comes working with me that uh, there are no stupid questions. Uh, yeah. It's just uh, silly not to ask questions because then you actually never gain knowledge. Yeah, I think uh, one of the most productive things that you can do if somebody is clearly confident with something and you're not is to ask them yeah. <laughs> what it is. Exactly. They're probably the best person to explain it yeah. instead of them going, but yeah, exactly. also, I believe the best way you can get help is you ask it. Yeah, that's exactly. the most important thing. Yeah. But I think uh, very often people are, you feel um, that you should know something and then you don't ask if, uh, if it's something that someone mentions very casually as it is something that you should know and you don't know it and you <laughs> and people automatically think, oh, I should have known that yeah. and you don't ask, but that's not the, that's not the way to learn. Yeah. I've never, I've never been received badly when I say that. Uh, no, but yeah, no. that makes sense. I, I can definitely imagine situations, at least when I was younger, that you had to look cool. <laughs> so exactly. You, <laughs> so with, with, yeah, with maturity and age, you learn you don't have to be so yeah. cool. You, yeah. just ask, you just ask the questions. <laughs> yeah. With the students, I mean, some of them say something and it's like, oh, that's the new thing. I don't know. And I should know because I'm the teacher. <laughs> but then it's, it feels good when they, when they explain you and they also feel good like, okay, you know, uh, we know yeah. something and we can explain it to them. So I think yeah, exactly. No, I, def I definitely agree. I always, I also always say if I don't know, um, I, when I'm as a teacher, I say, oh, it's a really good question. We should actually check that. And um, then we can even go and just look it up together. Do you students, students bring a lot of insight. And um, I think it's, uh, it's mutually beneficial having, a, for example, having good research students. And uh, being, if, even though you are the instructor, you still learn a lot from the student as well. So. That's, yeah, <laughs> I, we all agree. We all agree to yes. This, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and do you feel like, uh, is the first, right? yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Um, do you feel like uh, there's different expectations among uh, disciplines and uh, among what, how specialized people are? Is there, for instance, a, a very common thing in CS is to say that usually women are focused on the more social aspects of the science? uh while guys are guys and they do their coding and they do their things uh, yeah, i guess that's the, i guess that's the stereotype right yeah, yeah. Um, but that's that's not actually my experience so i've been working now with a number of people in the department of computer science um i've actually um mainly been working with the females yet in the in ru but um for me, um, what they have been, what they are dealing with, and the, the and the men I know in the Department of Computer Science, it's so diverse because the Department of Computer Science is so diverse. And you also realize this when you meet the master students and they're presenting their projects. So this is a huge discipline, yeah. and um, I think it's very, it's a very simple explanation to say that women do more social and simple, and men do more complex because it's. I don't think it's that way. I mean, we have women doing the math, um, computer science, which I don't think anyone will say is uh, social or simple. <laughs> and uh, and the women I've been working with, they are all um, they are doing very diverse things, all in their with their own um, um, own way of doing things and looking at things. And I actually think diversity is uh, an important part. It's the same as with interdisciplinary teams. I mean, if you are a man man or a woman, you may look at things differently, but also just as an individual. Yeah. So, and I don't think we should also stigmatize and say, you know, for example, having user-friendly software, that that is something that is um, uh, then social and less important. I think it's actually hugely important. Yeah. So um, I think these are all just different, different uh, puzzles of the, same, um, of the same picture and we need to work together to make a good picture. Yeah, one thing I heard that I really liked a couple of years ago was that computer science and lots of the like of course engineering as well and they are sciences that interact so much with how li what life is becoming in the modern world that if they weren't diverse as sciences and as who implements them and who comes up with new things we would just end up with a, do a reality that's dominated by just one kind of mm application on one kind of <laughs> GUI or whatever uh, while yeah having diversity sort of brings it's like a mini mini projection of the whole world into a field so that it evolves okay. together. Yeah, that's a really that's a really good way of thinking of it I agree so that means when in the the teachers uh, the students and people who are working in the industry they need to be diverse because otherwise we don't have any products that work for a certain um, part of the population and that would be that would be crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
And uh, one question I had for you, since you come from a biology background, is that, uh, well, I mean, that's very specific, I guess, but uh, I've heard at least that uh, medicines and lots of applications in the world of uh, yeah, biology, I guess, and uh, ca comes like with a very specific target group in mind, which was usually like men from 20 up to 60. Uh, and that now it's starting to change and it's also because part of the community now becomes women okay. so they understand that uh, medicine should not only be designed for men because different things <laughs> no i just i just finished writing a paper before easter with um, anna sigrid island and maria oskarsdottir in the department of computer science where this is actually one of the things we are targeting because in the in my field in the sleep field we have seen for example for sleep apnea the diagnostics originally were, it was all um, overweight or obese men who were middle-aged. So <laughs> now, still, 50 years later, 40, 50 years later, uh, the screening tools are all designed to capture um, the symptoms of these middle-aged men. Mm -hmm. And the men, for example, describe sleepiness and falling asleep very easily, while women more typically have insomnia. So even if sleep, women have sleep apnea where they stop breathing at night, they may not fall asleep during the daytime while they're driving. They are rather likely to go to the doctor and say they are fatigued or tired. And because they describe tiredness and not falling asleep at the wheel, they don't go to, they, they're not sent for diagnosis. Yeah. And even women with the same symptoms as men, um, they are less likely to get diagnosed and treated than the men. Because it's, the stereotype is the man. Yeah. Um, so this is, um, and, and some of our tools, like how we ask for sleepiness, they are all targeted, they're targeted for the men. So this is definitely one of the things we do need to change. And we may need to make uh, different than symptom profiles, for example, for men and, men and fem females. And this is some of the things we can do now. Because we work in an interdisciplinary fashion, we can have access to thousands of um, patient records and data, um, asking for all of the permissions, of course, and then we can do much better screening tools. Yeah. And we can do much better analysis. And this we do because we are working together with engineers and computer scientists to make these proper analysis. Yeah, yeah that definitely sounds very interesting. Uh, this project specifically, like, I think it has everyone very fascinated <laughs> from every discipline in the CS department. Everyone's thinking, hmm, that sounds... Yeah, we, we are really happy to work with uh, good people. So if, if someone wants to work with us, please send us an email because we would, uh, be, happy, we would be happy to consider it. Yeah? Well, the project itself is very interesting and the fact that it includes so many disciplines and it sort of feel like very real that that's, that's the world should be. Like it's not just one discipline and just one people doing things, it's all of us doing things together. Yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely agree. I think one plus one plus one becomes more than two if we do it if we do it in the right way. It is more complex because you do need to get everyone in the same boat and working in the same direction. But um, I think it is worth it. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. um, how how has it been working here? I mean, uh, you you're very new. <laughs> Um, yes, but I had been at RU a bit longer, so I had um, I had had an office here for I think a year and a half before I got the um, before I got the position because I was working as a postdoctoral researcher, and I really like it here at RU. I think um, uh, one of the things we could get this grant and we could work in this interdisciplinary way is that it's not such a big um, university. It's not one of these old, really huge institutions where the different departments are in you know, different areas of the university and you would never ever see each other. Yeah. Um, and I think um, the hierarchy here is not so, um, it's not so much, there are not so many barriers between people if someone is um, at a different level or in different departments. So mm -hmm. we, we have easy and good communications. So. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, if there's always like uh, in, in academia, depending on where you come from, there's the idea of somebody specializing into something and something and then their students specialize even more mm -hmm. and then now everyone suddenly realizes that we've specialized too much and we need to kind of branch out a bit and see mix who's things. next to us mix yeah. things up because otherwise it yeah communication is impossible and uh, yeah mm -hmm. basically like things don't progress as fast as they could they don't get applied where they should it's really 
exactly. And it's fine to have specialized. I mean, I'm not going to become a software developer or I'm not, I'm not going to be the one who does the machine learning models. I know that. And that's fine because I then, it's also fine if one person has this set of expertise, if you can then work with another person and you can connect, then I think it, because uh, you, you can't expect one person to have all of the needed skills anymore. It, I don't think it's really uh, feasible. No, of course, yeah. of course it right. takes, yeah. for many fields, it takes years to even reach a level where you can publish something. Uh, yeah. like educationally you need to read and read exactly yeah. Yeah. but at least yeah like the whole idea of scientists being locked up in their rooms and doing their own thing is like <laughs> collapsing a lot it's uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I feel i don't know how it looks like from the perspective of somebody who grew up uh, maybe in like the western world or <laughs> depending on where they grew up at least like from i'm from the south mediterranean and <laughs> Mm -hmm. which I believe is kind of a uniform environment as well. And the idea that doing research is somewhere by yourself and nobody likes to talk to other people is very strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it holds, yeah, it's like yeah. coming deeply rooted into the um, mindset of people. I think it's also maybe a bit just the old way of doing things. Um, and yeah. it's, bec it's becoming, um, yeah, we, are, we have evolved from there, I think, that we have learned that in, at least in, for many disciplines, I'm not going to say for everything, but for many disciplines, such as for sleep, we definitely need to work together. And uh, doing something alone, uh, I don't, yeah, both, it's not fun. It's much more fun to work with people. And I think you get much more, you get much better work from it. You get much more output and much better products that uh, people can use, whether it's papers or applications or what it is. All right. Well, I think we've done quite a lot of time. Uh, we didn't exactly follow the structure, but <laughs> yeah. it's super Chat. interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah. so ending, uh, I would just, I just have one question or uh, do you have any like experience that you want to share very close to your heart or uh, to this university? Mm, maybe because one of the things you were asking me about was about um, <clears throat> being a woman in research versus uh, a man, because that was one of the things you were asking, some, sending some of the questions about. Um, I have seen, because I'm now working uh, more internationally as well, I'm in the board of the European Sleep Research Society and, and, um, and other committees, and um, it has been really interesting to realize um, that in many countries, women are not necessarily going for these positions. Mm -hmm. And you realize uh, when you start working with people, for example, more from the south of Europe or from the middle of Europe, that they are sometimes very surprised that young women or relatively young women, I'm still only 39, you know, <laughs> I consider myself kind of young, um, that we actually go for these positions and that we are willing to speak up and do these things. For them, it becomes normal that you have uh, one or two children and then you stop work, you start working less or you're not able to work so much anymore. You don't have kindergarten. Uh, it's, it's, everything is somehow more complicated. And you realize that this is a privilege to be in a country where we can actually speak up and uh, mm -hmm. we, are, we, are, um, we can continue to work. Um, so um, yeah, you realize when you, when you see, this, see this discrepancy that uh, yeah. we have a we have a long way to go. Um, uh, yeah, me too, me too. I think one of the uh, reasons of this podcast is that just to show as an example that we can do it, we have been doing yeah. it, and it's yeah. not very and easy, very... but still it's fun and we are doing it. Yeah, so that's yeah. Yeah. No, no, we can we can definitely do it, but uh, it it helps if the infrastructure of the society allows us to do it well. If yeah. it's not yeah. like in the U.S. where childcare is so expensive that one person really has to stay at home mm -hmm. and for some reason it often ends up being the, the woman but it's such a shame after all of this studying and all of this work if people are uh, missing out because you, you know we, we can do both we can do both well it's sometimes tricky but we we can do it yeah yeah and it's also in my from my point of view as somebody who moved out of their country and came here and I think probably from yours as well it's less hard than you expect <laughs> at least from yeah so that's also okay from outside it seems like oh my god it's a tough job but we are yeah. new in a new country but when you start doing things it gets easier yes. and you actually realize that it's just your thinking you need to you need to get your shoes dirty in the mud and then it will be a nice walk that's it Excellent. So that's another form of imposter syndrome, I guess, that uh, yeah. you can overcome. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it looks like you have to be this amazing person to make it. But I mean, even just us, the imposters, <laughs> 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 somehow. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you very much yeah. for joining it's us. A, it's a very good to talk to you. And nice to talk to you guys as well. Yeah. I hope you can see you in, in person at some point. Exactly. The university will be open and the party is open. Everything goes out and we can be one big happy family. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. Exactly. I missed that. But thank you guys. Thanks for contacting me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.